Born It. It's Tammy with Real Southern Woman. Um, I've been waiting on Chris to get outside because he's working outside today and it's taken him forever, but he's finally outside so we can do our Bible study. It's just so hard for me to do it when he's in the house. Um, today we're going to review December the 18th and I got the new book I told y'all yesterday, Experiencing God Day by Day by Henry and Richard Blackaby. So we're going to start with it first. Um, this one is entitled, Who Are You? And um, it comes from the scripture from Acts 19, 15. So I'm going to actually get my King James and read it out of that because it's not copyrighted. So we're going to grab that. And that is Acts. Let me turn to it again. Acts 19, verse 15. So it's Acts chapter 9, that's in the New Testament. Um, and verse, not, I mean, uh, chapter 19, verse 15. So if you've got a Bible, you can flip over there with me. And then we're going to read what he has to say about this scripture. Okay, this is um, a, a riot at Ephesus, it says, and this is Paul uh, during the time when he was in Ephesus, and um, this scripture says, and the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus, I know, Paul, and Paul, I know, but who are you? So that's what an evil spirit had to say to this man. He said, um... The evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know and Paul I know, but who are you? So that's kind of interesting that the spirit knew who Paul was. And he knew who Jesus was, but he didn't know whoever this was talking to him. Okay, so we're going to read this now so y'all kind of get the picture, okay? It says, hey Donna, hey Marilyn. It says, um, there is no secondhand spirituality. No one else can develop Christian maturity, maturity on your behalf. Um, a strong Christian heritage is an asset, but it cannot take the place of your own vibrant, growing relationship with Christ. Um, he says that Paul had a powerful walk with God and used him so mightily that an extraordinary, uh, that he had miracles that occurred throughout his life. And uh, cloths that touched Paul's uh, were taken, it says cloths that touched Paul were taken to the sick and the sick were healed. Um, evil spirits were cast out and Paul's preaching and teaching were instrumental in building a strong church in Ephesus. So um, he's letting us know how impressive Paul's ministry was. And it did say, this evil spirit did say he knew who Paul was. Um, there were the seven sons of the chief priests called Scavia. Um, I was trying to see if that was a C or an E. I read it earlier, but I, I thought it was two E's. I thought it was Scavia, but it's Scavia. Scavia. Um, anyway, these sons attempted to cast out some demons because they knew Paul had done it. And they decided they could do it. And they confronted an evil spirit and attempted to exercise it. And they said, by the Jesus that Paul preaches. And these men were trying to use the spiritual power that Paul had acquired after years of walking closely with his Lord. And we all know that the power came upon them in Acts so that they could spread the gospel a lot faster and more um, so that people would know that it was miracles. That's why the miracles were in Acts, uh, to show, really, the Jews that Jesus Christ was really who he said he was. Um, they could imitate Paul's words, but they could not duplicate the power that was through his personal relationship with God. Um, it says the evil spirit came back and he said, I know Jesus and I recognize Paul, but who are you? And the demon then viciously attacked them and humiliated them. And the evil spirits were fearfully aware of Jesus. And they were familiar with Paul's influence over the powers of darkness. But the demons had no knowledge of the seven sons of Scevia. 
You can duplicate the words and deeds of a spiritual, uh, of a spiritually mature Christian, but you cannot inherit his or her walk with God. Christian maturity takes effort and it comes over time. If you ignore Christ, you will not grow in your faith. Imitating the faith of others will not give you victory. Only as you nurture your own relationship with Jesus will your life be filled with spiritual maturity and power. So that's an interesting reading today. Uh, because a lot of us, um, I know I've known in my life several people who did uh, acknowledge Christ um, they would shout, you know, do shout outs in public to uh, the Lord Jesus Christ and praise the Lord and that kind of stuff. But in their own spirituality, in their own life with Christ, they would not read the Bible and they did not read the Bible. And they would say, I just don't understand it. You know, it's too complicated. I need somebody to read it for me or I need to be taught by somebody else. And that is not being a mature Christian. Now, even if you don't understand everything you're reading, that's okay. You should still take the time out to read the Word of God and get out of it what He would have you get out of it. If you are a saved person, then you have the Holy Spirit living inside of you. Spiritually, you can read the Bible because it's a spiritual book. Um, so if you're one of those people, remember that it's up to you to grow your spiritual maturity, not other people. Now, it's good, you know, for you to uh, listen to others and join in in studies and things, but you should also pick pick up a book and read uh, yourself as well. Uh, now we're going to read what Charles Stanley had to say for today. I'm actually reading out of two books. I like both of these guys, and they've done a really good job of bringing us the Word of God. Um, and he wants to talk about overcoming discouragement. And this is a good one this time of year to talk about because there's a lot of people that get discouraged around the holidays. They've had a lot happen to them. They've had a lot of memories. They've lost loved ones. And they're just kind of depressed this time of year. So this is to cheer you up and to teach you how to focus on other things. Okay? So this is coming out of 2 Corinthians 1.9. So if you want to get your Bibles and turn to 2 Corinthians 1.9, we're going to do that right quick. So I'm going to grab my Bible, and I'm going to turn it to 2 Corinthians 1.9, and that again is in the New Testament. Uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John is the first four books, which are the Gospels, and then you keep flipping and you'll see the 2 Corinthians. So you're at 2 Corinthians 1 verse 9, and... Um, this is going to teach us how to be cheerful during a time of uh, discouragement, okay? But we had the sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God which raiseth the dead. I'll read it again. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 9. But we had the sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God, which raiseth the dead. Okay? Now we're going to read what Charles Stanley has to say about discouragement. Um, hey, good morning, Jamie. And I think I've said hey to Marilyn. Um, so we're going to read this. It says, overcoming discouragement. We had the sentence of death within ourselves so that we would not trust in ourselves, but in God who raises the dead. He actually quoted the King James Version in this book. And this is Charles Stanley and what he has to say. If you are feeling disheartened today, take heart. As you see in today's verse, even Paul faced feelings of intense discouragement. So y'all shouldn't feel guilty for feeling discouraged and know that even a man like Paul did feel discouraged, okay? But Paul learned to live above his circumstances, and you can too. Now, this is a beautiful thing to say and a beautiful thing to know in your mind and in your heart that you can live beyond your circumstances, Paul did it, and we can too. 
First, he focused on God rather than the problem. As you deal with life's trials, center your attention on Jesus. He has the sovereign ability to handle whatever you're facing and can help you in miraculous ways. Second, focus on the wisdom of God instead of the will of man. Seeking the counsel of others is always a wise idea. However, be sure that your friends tell you what they tell you agrees with the will of God, which is your ultimate authority. And that is very important, y'all, because lots of times we uh, get discouraged. Um, we focus on the problem. We go to our friends, we tell them what's going on, and we listen to what they have to say. And I know I know very well, because it happens to me too, we all have friends that are spiritual, and we all have friends that are spiritual. Um, and most of the time, if it's something that we don't want to hear from God, we'll go to the ones that are not spiritual, and it's going to give us a worldly answer, because that's what we want to hear. But remember that you need to be in God's will and you need to think on good things and what God would have you do other than just what men would have you do. It says, focus on the wisdom of God instead of the will of man. Um, likewise, seek him first on your own because he always re reveals himself to those who seek him. Finally, focus on the positive results rather than the personal pain. When trials come, ask the Lord to show you what he wants to accomplish through them and how can you join him to get this accomplished. And this is a lot easier said than done, I know. But we need to think about what Charles Stanley is telling us here because he is a spiritual man and he's talking and asking us to do the will of God. It says Paul lived above his circumstances because he focuses his focus was on Jesus and not on the trial. As a result, he gained the victory, and so can you. So don't be disheartened. Trust him and triumph. Um, what this reminds me of the most is um, my battery's going dead in my phone. But what this, let me get rid of this. What this reminds me of the most, I don't know why, but it just comes to mind when I was a little girl and things weren't always good at home and I can remember if I was discouraged what I did um, now I wasn't a learned Christian and my mother didn't read the Bible as much as she ought to have she was a pastor's daughter but she hardly ever picked it up unless something big was happening in her life so she really wasn't a um, what you would call a um, mature Christian. Now, most people would think she was a pastor's daughter and she went to church all the time. Sure, she was a mature Christian. She was not. You can't be a mature Christian if you're not, if your relationship isn't really close to God. And you cannot have a close relationship with God if you never let him talk to you. Now, praying is good and we should all pray, but that's us talking to God. We should also let him talk to us through his word. If you refuse to read his word or make excuses as to why you don't have to read his word, then your relationship with him is not near as good as you think it is. Because think about it. If you, have a, if you were married and you talked to your husband all the time, but he never said one word to you, would that be a good relationship? No, that's what happens when we don't let God talk to us through his word. It's the only way he could talk to us. He doesn't, he doesn't come down here miraculously in a cloud and give us a great idea. The Holy Spirit can lead us, but we should let God talk to us through his word. There's, that's two different things. So uh, remember that. But it reminds me, when I was little, uh, I lived above my circumstances. Um, a lot of people don't want to hear about my personal life when I was little uh, because they think it's a um, it's not respectful to my parents. 
Um, and I guess it's not to a certain extent, but you know what? There's many of us that didn't have the best upbringing, even if people around us thought we did, because nobody knows what it's like in, behind somebody's doors and what it's like inside a house unless they live there. So whenever I got discouraged, I did live beyond the circumstances. And I would go out on the back and I would go out in the pasture. I remember it vividly. And I remember where I would sit and I remember where I would stare up into the heavens and I would pray and I would talk to God. And it would always make me feel better. It was like I gave everything to him. Even as a child, I did that, y'all. And it makes all the difference in the world. Um, the people who have come to know me personally and they realize the things that I have been through have a hard time understanding how easy, how I have overcome the obstacles without being depressed without um, not loving people and that kind of thing. And what they don't realize is God and Jesus Christ helps us go beyond this life here and live a very spiritual, um, abundant life here on this earth if we will just surrender um, and listen to him and give him our um, problems. I mean, he tells us, that he will bear our burdens. And so many of us think we give them to him, but we really don't. But if you will give them to God, and you will, you can live beyond your circumstances. So I hope and pray if there's anybody out there today um, who is in a time of discouragement, you will think about what I've said to you this morning, and you will overcome this world and the things of this world and the things, even your health and everything else, um, you can remember that Jesus can help you overcome it. Okay? Uh, we'll say our prayers this morning. It's so good to see everybody. Hey, Shauna. Hey, Jewel. Um, and we're going to say our prayers. And thanks for tuning in. I hope and pray that uh, you've been blessed by this study. And um, we, we just thank, um, I just thank you for tuning in. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for today. We thank you for the beautiful sunshine. We thank you for your word. We thank you so much that we can give you our burdens and live an abundant life here on earth. Help us overcome the circumstances we are in. Help us see your will in whatever it is and be able to ask you to help us um, accomplish whatever it is you're trying to teach us. Um, we just praise your name and thank you for everyone that's watching. Help us as we go throughout our day to be a good Christian and a good example. Help us build up others and be an encouragement to others. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Bye, y'all. Love ya.